Hello Internet, this is Astro with Roro, and tonight we're going to be talking about an exciting development with ZWO's ASI294 monochrome camera. I was actually planning to do some deep space imaging tonight, but when I loaded up some software, I noticed that there was an update to ZWO's drivers. So I downloaded it, and lo and behold, ZWO has heard our calls and unlocked the new one times binning mode on this camera, allowing us to get a true readout of the tiny pixels on this sensor in its native mode. Now, these pixels truly are tiny at 2.315 micrometers. That is actually the smallest pixel size that I have seen to date on an astrophotography camera, and I'm sh quite sure it is the smallest in the ZWO lineup. This means that this camera has the highest resolution of all ZWO cameras. So, what is the big deal about this one times unlocked binning mode? Well, it means that you get access to a huge number of pixels, but there is a trade off to that. So, let's dive in to the computer as we walk through together how to navigate this new mode. If you like videos like this and want to see more, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're waiting for my ultimate portable power guide, that is still coming this week, but I had to prioritize this video real quick to get it out to you guys. So do make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell icon and get notified about the ultimate portable power setup. So now that we're on the computer, you can see that I have ASICAP here with the latest version 2.3. It was just released a few hours ago. We are under the RAW 16 mode and bin times 2. This is exactly what this camera would have looked like had you looked at it before updating this driver. We have a resolution of 4144 by 2822. Now, under this binning mode, you can toggle down here and click binning one and all of a sudden you get 8288 by 5644 and we get a whopping 47 megapixels worth of resolution this is phenomenal however there are a large number of caveats you will not want to use this mode very often but it is exceptionally cool that it is here so let's dive in First off, if we go to the binning 2 mode and have a look at a 100% resolution here at the moon, you can see it takes up a reasonably small amount of the frame. However, if we go across to binning 1 mode, zoomed out, it looks exactly the same. Do be aware your field of view will not change with this unlocked mode, but your resolution will change. Let's now go to 100% zoom, and wow, what a difference. So that is the benefit of this mode, is you get a much larger amount of resolution. The pixels are much smaller, so you get a much higher amount of resolution and detail in your images. However, to do that, there are some sacrifices. If we come down here and expose this so that we are just about clipping, there we go, we can see we've got uh, a little bit of clipping just at the end here. There's some highlights up here that are clipping, but it looks pretty good. Now, if we jump back over to binning 2 mode, which is where the camera adds four pixels together to create one, you will notice that suddenly, let me just zoom back in here, suddenly our histogram shows that we're no longer clipping. Now, this is because when a camera combines its pixels, you get an increased bit depth. You get four pixels that can determine brightnesses, and they are all then worked into one final value. So you increase the amount of bit depth that you get dramatically, or the number of levels between complete blackness and complete brightness. That is why now we have this uh, decrease in our histogram here, because we can capture more levels of brightness. So by dropping down to a binning one mode, you lose that brightness, that large amount of bit depth that we traditionally had with this camera. Now this is bad in some situations, but in other situations, you can deal with it. In planetary, for example, there may not be a huge amount of difference between the brightest point of a planet and the dumb, dullest point of a planet. Uh, taking a face on image of Jupiter, for example, you will notice that a lot of it falls within a similar brightness level. This is a perfect example of where you can use that extra resolution without losing out on the bit depth levels. Finally, and the 
Another major issue with this binning mode is that you will notice there is a significant drop in the frames per second that you are able to capture. Now, this won't matter if you are doing deep space photos where you're taking 30, 40, five, uh, 30 or 40 second images up to five or 10 minute images, of course, because you are not limited by the number of frames the camera can put out. However, if you are looking to use this camera for planetary or solar or lunar imaging, then do be advised that you lose a large number of frames per second in the unlocked mode. So here in this unlocked mode at the full resolution, you can see we're getting about three and a half frames per second. However, if we jump back over to the two bidding mode, then you can see that jumps up to a whopping 13 to 14 frames per second. Now, this is because there is just such a large amount of data that is getting pushed over the USB interface that the camera simply can't push out enough frames per second to meet that bandwidth. So what do I recommend this camera for? Well, I recommend that you use this camera and in its tiny pixel modes if you want to get a luminance layer that gets a huge amount of detail. Since this camera is monochrome, what I will be using it for is uh, I will be using the unlocked mode to get a luminance base at a high resolution. That way you can get uh, extreme detail in some things like uh, a lunar photo, for example, you can get all that really extremely tight detail or a solar imaging, for example. And then I will use the two by two mode for all of my color and narrow band filters on top of it because you don't really need a huge amount of detail in the color filter side of things to layer over the top of a really detailed luminance layer. This will also be great if you want to get a luminance layer of a planet, say Jupiter, since it has such tiny pixels, you can really increase the amount of magnification, if you will, uh, of this camera. You can really push it to get that detail. And then you can use something like the ASI 462 color to get the color gradient over the top and even a infrared layer. Now there is one more thing that we need to talk about this camera and that is file sizes. Traditionally, this camera has had about a 22 to 23 megapixel file size uh, for 16-bit fits, that is raw images. However, if you unlock this camera into its one times mode and take a 16-bit fit raw image, then you are looking at 91 to 92 megabytes per image. To put that into perspective, if you take one minute exposures on this camera and try and gain three hours of integration time, you're going to need over 16 gigabytes of storage to store all that information. Of course, if you're wanting to move into planetary or solar or lunar imaging and really crank those frame rates as high as you can get, then your image files are going to be huge and you're going to need an awful lot of storage. So I do recommend if you're going down the planetary or lunar or solar route with this, that you make sure that you use the correct resolution and stop it down when necessary to make sure your file sizes are as small as possible and your frame rates stay as high as possible. So that's it for this new unlocked binning mode. It is very exciting to have the option and essentially having two cameras in one, an ultra high resolution camera at low frame rates and low bit depth and a moderate uh, resolution camera with really great full well depth and really great bit depth. And combining the two, we're gonna see some awesome images coming out of this camera. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be going through and doing a bit more of an in-depth review of this mode. This is just an initial impression since it literally just got released today. So my name's Rowan and I'll see you in the next video.